And welcome everyone to an ABC chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Drew Valentine from Loyal of Chicago. And Drew, you're off to a great start. Uh, it's easier when you get your first head coaching job, when you're very familiar with uh, the players because so many of them came back. Uh, so a week or so into the season, um, what have you learned so much uh, so far about your own coaching style, your own ability to be number one, that head coach? Yeah, it's it's I I, I definitely got to give my props and respect to, to all my mentors that came before me because it's it can be a lot to manage, you know, during a game. And, and um, but I've got a really great uh, staff uh, that's helping me stay on top of things and helping me stay organized. Uh, also have some pretty good players uh, that are going out there and making plays. And I think one thing that that I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to be I mean, I'm still getting after it with intensity on the sideline, but I, I really want my players to feel confident during the game and their abilities. And so I'm trying to really be in control of my emotions and, and you know, trying to create positive vibes and positive energy on the sidelines with them. So for younger coaches uh, who may be watching and thinking about when it's going to be their turn, uh, what are some things that you found are key in that early transition period once the school year starts preseason and then really into the throes of practice? I think the best thing that, that younger coaches can do is prepare like a head coach while they're an assistant. I think, you know, coming up with the simple, the simple things of, you know, presenting practice ideas, you know, presenting solutions uh, to your head coaches. Um, that was one thing that, that I really learned from another great role model as an assistant that I had was, was Brian Mullins, who was also the head coach at Southern Illinois uh, University. He always was, was, constantly thinking like a head coach he was making sure that the players were good mentally he was just constantly on every little detail and, and that helps the head coach uh do their job at a high level and so I think you know my time as an assistant really prepared me because I was trying to do as an assistant basically everything that I mean I'm now it's my call whether to go out there and do it or not um, so that's the that's the major difference but um I, I was always trying to come up with ideas and create practice plans and, and do those sorts of things. So make sure that, that you're doing that um, when you're an assistant. How much do you though also have to check your sort of time schedule, if you will, your time management? Um, because last year, every day, no one knew if you're gonna practice, who's gonna be there. I mean, it was like a year, none of us have experienced in our lives, let alone in college basketball. Um, I would think there'd be a tendency almost to try to do so much do everything because we weren't able to do as much last year. How have you been able to sort of manage your own expectations and your schedule and your sleep schedule here in the early part of the season? Yeah, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still struggling with, with what to do, you know, because there's so many aspects of the job, like you said, whether it's preparation, whether it's spending time with your players, helping develop and, and continue those strong relationships. Um, and then also, obviously we got to recruit, um, and, and try to get on 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 the horn and, and texts and things and ideas and I mean there's you know just so much that goes into it but um, you know like I said earlier I've got a great staff and I think one thing that I've really really trying to tried to learn to do over my past six months and again I'm I'm only three games in so not like I know know anything but know everything but um, I'm really trying to like delegate better. And if I'm if I need help in an area, I give it to one of my assistants, I give it to my director of operations, I give it to my administrative assistant, I ask for help and asking for help isn't a sign of weakness. It's, you know, I'm really big with, you know, mental health and, and my players mental health and, and uh, it's better for my mental health if I if I can ask, and I can trust that that person's going to get it done at a high level and that's what I've really been doing is, is trusting those around me to, to help me be better. I love that you brought that up because I think that's critical especially because we all went from being confined at home, essentially, to suddenly back into semi-normal lives. And that brings me to one last point about this. Like, how do you also balance your personal time, your family time? Because so much of us were immersed back into our families. Uh, and then suddenly now you have this freedom to be out and about. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you got to balance that personal family life. Um, you can't just be, you know, all one and all the other. Yeah, um, balance is key. And, and I, I've done a ton of uh, interviews and people have asked me a lot of what I've learned from a lot of the, the great mentors that I've had. And 
Coach Porter Moser obviously is is you know probably my biggest mentor, and uh, besides my dad, and I think one of the one of the greatest things he taught me was balance. Is that you gotta make sure you spend time with with your with your family with your wife. Um, you have to spend time, you know, with those relations with your friends and, and other family members. And so, um, I mean, every morning I uh, I wake up and uh, my daughter, she's seven months now, and I make sure I get up with her and spend a couple hours with her before I head in. And um, I make sure, you know, I'm still taking taking the wife out on dates and making sure I'm trying to, you know, do those sorts of things. And and so, uh, yeah, it's been it's been such a fun journey and I'm still trying to learn and navigate, but um, I'm just lucky that I have so many people that support me and um, are helping me through this, through this journey. All right. One last thing, Drew, uh, you know, you're barely on the job and suddenly now you're going to be in a new conference. Uh, Loyola's <laughs> just getting used to the Valley. Uh, big right. news, Loyola Chicago going to the Atlantic 10 uh, in more major media markets. Uh, so this job really has climbed. You were there with Porter. I mean, clearly uh, everything with the success of the final four run is continuing here. What does that mean for your job to now, a year from now, be in the Atlantic 10? I think it's great for the university. I think it's great for our athletic department. And I think, uh, you know, when you make this jump, uh, you know, and you, and you change, change leagues, um, I think it just shows the commitment that our university has to, to making, you know, men's basketball and all of athletics really successful and really uh, compete at a, you know, championship level. And I think, uh, you know, our, our, you know, it's going to be a big challenge for us to, to continue to um, remain, uh, you know, one of the top teams in, in that league. And, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we'll do all that we can uh, from, from our perspective as a staff to keep our players prepared and, and confident and, uh, you know, compete for championships in the Atlantic 10 as well. Well, Drew, I appreciate it. Continue to have that balance in your life and on the court and, Certainly the Ramblers are off to a great start. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, Andy.